Uh, good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. It's Crystal here. <clears throat> I just wanted to do a code re review with you. And this code review is going to be in the R programming language. And we're going over a data set, which is RAIN, Austra Rain in Australia. And it's going to be um, a regression analysis in R. And basically, I was watching a video from Elijah Apaya, and Elijah Apaya used this data set. And I decided to go ahead and try to do a regression analysis based upon what Elijah Apaya said in his video. But he did it up on our studio. And I don't have our studio. I don't feel comfortable putting a uh, software on my computer because then you open it up to viruses because I have a, a Microsoft Windows computer and it already has a firewall. And as long as I don't install software that's not in the Microsoft store, I should be safe. And in addition to that, I'm with, I'm with Vodafone, and with Vodafone, I also get a firewall as well. And as long as I stay online, I should be safe as well. And so Kaggle is online. I can't, I have a really hard time using RefLet because RefLet does not allow you to install libraries, or if you do install libraries, it is uh, very hard very hard to do it it takes a long time to do it and then it crashes and things like that so if i can do a notebook using cackle then that is better because the reason why is because when you get into regression analysis and also machine learning you're going to have to install libraries and installing libraries is where the difficulty lies it's okay to use functions that are built into R but when you want to install libraries that's when you're going to have trouble so now I've told you a little bit about <clears throat> my IT troubles we're going to look at the problem statement for the rain in Australia data set. So it says predict next day rain by training classification models on the target variable rain tomorrow. It says this data set contains 10 years of daily weather observations from many locations across Australia. Rain tomorrow is the target variable to predict. It means did it rain the next day? Yes or no? This column is yes if the rain for that day was one millimeter or more. So that's what the problem statement is. But I didn't do any machine learning in, on this occasion. I'm just doing regression analysis. And so regression analysis is different from machine learning. But the first thing that you want to do is you want to import your libraries. And that's the great thing about Cackle is these libraries are already installed in the Kaggle Jupyter Notebook. So all you have to do is import them. So we import Vista, which is a data visualization, DLOOKR, Tidyverse, MFX, and Starkeyser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a blog post on this. And whenever I make the blog post on this, I'll go into more detail about what the libraries are actually used for. Because um, I'm relatively new to R. I've been working with Python about two and a half years, but I've only just started using R. And the reason why is because I want to open myself up to uh, more data science topics and I can watch videos in R and translate them to Python but in this particular instance I didn't translate it to Python because um, <clears throat> I'm doing it on Kaggle but quite often a lot of the R that I find I translate over to Python but if you're going to be a data scientist you need to know um, more than one language. So I'm trying to get my fingers in R a little bit. So we read the file 
and the thing about uh, cackle is you know I sort of like had to figure out how to read the file on my own but df equals read.csv and then there's the csv file that we read into the system and I sort of had to figure that out on my own because um, Kaggle doesn't give you really any advice if you're using R. You just have to stumble along. So I stumbled along and figured it out and got it right. So we can see the data set. Another difference between, um, it says this is a frame and it's got 23 columns of data. Okay. So I'm still learning R. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check the missing values. So we're going to plot the plot in a Pareto. We're going to make a Pareto plot. Uh, and this tells you what your missing values are. If it's red or amber, that means that you've got more than 50%. So if you have more than 50% of missing values, then you should just go ahead and remove those missing values. If you have less than 50% of missing values, then I guess the rule of thumb is that it is acceptable to impute them. And that's another thing, like whenever I watch YouTube videos from different people, uh, if I study R, then I'm going to pick up new topics that I might not necessarily pick up from somebody who's just doing Python. So that's another good reason to study R. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drop any missing values. So we still got 23 columns of data. So what that means is that we dropped um, the rows because the columns of data didn't change. <coughs> So we just drop the rows. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-process DF. So names DF, that's your column names. So that tells you what your column names are. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to convert these column names, wind gust DIR, wind DIR 9 a.m., wind DIR 3 p.m., rain today, rain tomorrow, we're going to convert those to factor and I think that means it's a string, it's an object or a string. <clears throat> so you can see now we have, um, we still got 23 columns of data but you can see right here that's a factor, that's a factor, you can see and I believe that a factor is a string. Now we're going to exclude the date and location because you don't need that. So this is this is the code to drop a column. That's the way you would do it in Python. You would drop a column. So now since we've excluded the date and location, we only have 21 columns of data. So we're going to make an extra column of data and we're going to call it rain tomorrow num. And it's going to be either a 1 or a 0. <clears throat> 1 for yes, 0 for no. So now we have 22 columns of data. So now we're going to define our linear model. And this is the code to define the model. And then we're also going to do a summary of it. And then so you get a summary of every row. And it gives you this statistical information. We're going to check the coefficients. So these are your coefficients. And then we're going to check stargazer. And stargazer just is a library that helps you put the data together. But as I learn more of R, I will become more proficient in what all of these functions do because the functions in R are different from the functions in Python. Now we're going to define our logic, which is like a logistic regression, I guess. We're going to get the coefficients, that's coef. We're going to put it under stargazer.
and then we're going to check the attributes of the logit. We're going to do define probit. Let me just see. Now we've defined our probit, and that's your probability. We're going to get our coefficients from probit. And then we're going to do something called MFX. So we're going to do the MFX for pro logic and then probit. And then we're going to do the more pseudo to probit. Some more codes that are statistical codes. And now we're going to do the stargazer and we're going to do stargazer on all three models model, logic, and probit. And so now you've got the stargazer so you can compare all of this information. And I will say that as I um, become more and more proficient with R, I'll have a greater understanding of what the libraries and the functions are for because the libraries and functions are different in Python and I do have to say that I like Python better um, and a lot of the reasons why people use stats model is because stats models has that R feel to it but I guess as I work more with R um, I'll become more proficient and maybe I'll like that better you never know because they say that R is a really popular language for data scientists as is Python and data scientists need to know R and Python so I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because I showed you the code review what I've done and I'm going to make a blog post on that as well so I would like to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing to my channel and I'd like to thank you for watching my video and I look forward to making more code reviews for you in the future.